Okay, there it goes. I think it's working now. I think, okay. honestly, according to what I was hearing, it sounds like it was working before. But yeah, I have I have no idea all the things that ha could happen today in this moment did happen. So, hi, there you is. I, mean, I had to do the same thing you did. Okay, well, we're live on the interweb, so they're all going to know about how we both had to take a potty break. <sighs> <laughs> Oh man, it's been a minute since you've been on a live with me. Who are you again? <laughs> I am the biggest flirt in the class of 1972 from Melvindale High School. Oh, good grief. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday night. I am joined with none other than Mama Nancy. This is the one who we can all blame for giving birth to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So it's been a little bit since I've had my mom on a live stream and I figured tonight would be a great night to just kind of catch up because I'm just going to do some mindless sewing. I'm going to show you what I'm going to work on in a minute because this is actually really exciting and I want to show you all the details about it. Um, but before we get into all of that, I just want to welcome everybody that's here. Thank you for joining me on Friday night. If you are new around here, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button down below, click the bell off to the right of it to get notifications for when I go live, including those mistakes when I don't even know what I said on the other one, but I, I'll just, I passed gas and I totally said, oops, I farted. <laughs> and I don't know if you I did say that. that. I did, but I don't know if I said that before <laughs> I went live or not. So we got a sneak peek into the mind of Becca when the cameras aren't rolling. Oops, I farted. <laughs> Boy, that coffee looks tasty. I'd like a cup. <laughs> you made me choke it. All right. We had to make a pot of coffee tonight because it is warm. It is warm. I'm sorry. It is cold outside and I need to warm up. My hands are cold. Yeah, all that stuff. So for those of you that have been around the channel a little bit, you if you were in the video just a few minutes ago, you probably are getting a message that says it was private. Yes, I know. I accidentally went live on a vid. I, I didn't realize I was live and I still had some things to take care of before we ripped the Band-Aid. And so I just ended it and started a whole new one, made that one private. And now five minutes retrospectively looking back, I'm like, you know, I could have just left that one live and just been like, hey, mom, entertain the troops while I go to the bathroom and then we could have switched off. But hey, here we are. You roll with it, right, Mama? Absolutely. So you've got some fun things to talk about tonight. Oh, my gosh. These people wore me out last weekend at that reunion. Yeah. Wore me out. We got into town Thursday afternoon. We uh -huh. went to Aunt Joyce's house. Uh-huh. And there were her kids and their families came over and we shared dinner. <gasps> she had chicken and dumplings. <laughs> okay. And you know what a good cook she is. <laughs> and then Rick and I left to go meet the committee member, the members from the reunion team um, uh -huh. for drinks or whatever. I pretty well behaved myself. Um, I had like two. And one was an accident. She brought the wrong thing. Uh <laughs> so we had a wonderful visit just the committee that night um so our class president who was supposed to attend was unable to because he had the death of a loved one mm. and the family had asked him to be a pallbearer so he had to stay at his home in arizona to meet that obligation which really it was the right thing to do yeah. So now we are short a speaker at the reunion. Mm -hmm. So it just so happened our class president from our sophomore and junior year was attending. And mm -hmm. he picked up the mic and filled in for the president, did an amazing job. Plus he took photos. Wait, I need to uh, stop you because you're getting into all the details and people don't know what the heck you're talking about. So let's rewind a little bit before you, you're telling an amazing story, but let's back it up for the people in the chat. They're like, what is she going on about? So for those of you that aren't tracking, my mom graduated. 
My mom graduated from high school in 1972, and this year they had their 50-year class reunion. Mom was on the planning committee, and yes. so she went to high school in southeastern Michigan. She currently lives in southwest Virginia, and so she and my stepdad drove up to the Detroit area for about a week, stayed with family, and did all of the reunion things. So what she's sharing with us tonight is kind of a recap of how her 50-year reunion went and just kind of catching up with everybody. So... That's it was what the whole about. weekend. It was yeah. a whole weekend. So let me get back to Friday night. We went and uh, one of the committee members, a friend of his showed up who just happened to do what? Cut hair? <laughs> who needed a haircut? So I asked him about it and the guy on the committee said, no, I got it. I got it. You just show up. Mm. So I didn't. He did an amazing job. I was very satisfied. Uh, that was all right, so we had Thursday night. Friday night was a meet and greet for the, whoever wanted to attend. I haven't hugged that many people in, I think, 100 years. Okay. Great evening, great, I mean, great conversation. I talked to, to people I never talked to before in my life that I went to school with. Mm -hmm. Plus, on Friday night, we also got to have a tour of our high school, which this is the last year it will be our high school. And your high school is? Melvindale High School. Melvindale. Okay. Um, the high school will become the new junior high come next school year. That's okay. the plan. And the high school has a new building that they'll be in. So okay. we got to tour it, you know, in the last days of it being a high school. And it's been a high school probably 70 years, that building. Yeah. Because my mother graduated from there. Got it. So that anyway, we did that on Friday, uh, Friday night. And then Saturday was a whirlwind. But it, it was just amazing. And then, you know, well, we were at the football field. Well, not the football field, at waiting for the high school tour on Friday. I may or may not have had a part in drinking moonshine in the parking lot. So got a couple of things in the chat and then we're gonna switch gears to show people what I'm gonna be working on and then we'll just talk. Cause you kind of came in hot, fast and furious talking about all the reunion stuff. And I got to bring people- I Love up it. What's going on. So Mary Serrano, is that <gasps> somebody- It's my know? Mary. <laughs> Hi, Mary. I'm guessing she you knew her because she wrote, we had so much fun together. So I figured she was on the committee with me and she is a doll. No, we talk every day. Awesome. Every day. <clears throat> also, and I have some questions that I'll ask you just like to kind of go through. So we'll we'll go through a lot of this. Sure. Um but I also see a comment in here and I want to give her a sh shout out. Gail Merrifield it lives in Garden City and she went to Garden City East and graduated in 71. Yay! Garden <laughs> City East was not our competitor, so that was okay. <laughs> we were competitors with Garden City West uh, back then. Okay. Well, all I know about Garden City is that's the hospital I was born in. Three of you were born there. Yep. And then you broke the pattern with Alicia. <laughs> she broke all the molds, honey. Let me tell you. <laughs> all right. So tonight, what we're going to be, what I'm going to be working on is this really new thing I want to talk to you about from Cotton Cut. So I'm going to make myself full screen while I show this off to you. So give me one second. We're going to pin me up here and I'm going to give you the overhead shot so you can kind of see a little bit of this cotton cuts has launched this really neat thing called i don't remember what it's called man way to fall flat on my face but i will tell you it is four i think different fabrics all die cut pieces that they send to you with no pattern so creativity is all on you it, it's left to 
totally left to your imagination. This is a new program that they just launched in September and they had very limited quantities of these packages. When you buy them, you can get a mini, which would just be one box, or the super, which is two boxes. The mini will include 250 pre-cut die cut pieces and the super will be 400 pieces and the reason why i'm telling you about all of this is because they had limited quantity in september but this is going to be a new program that they're launching starting in october and it's going to be on the 15th of every month there are about four different fabrics represented in each one of the kits and they are curated to work well together and it's just on you to decide what you want to do. So full disclosure, when I saw that they were announcing it, I stalked their website and I bought this one. This is the tulips line from Robin Pickens and I love tulips. So I wanted to buy this, but then Cotton Cuts reached out to me and said, hey, if they know I love my boutiques, if we send you the boutique one, will you do something with it on camera and just see what you can make, make up with it? And I said, sure. So they sent me this one for free. I purchased this one. I can't have two here. So we're going to do a giveaway. I will do, I'm not it's sure if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do a raffle or a giveaway contest. I think I might do a giveaway contest. So all of the details will be in the first comment, probably down below this video. So you'll have to come back and check the replay after the live stream ends. Maybe I, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that set up tonight. But it is coming. I will post on my community tab all the information for how we're going to do this. This tulip one is the one I'm going to give away. So we'll have entries open for a week and next week on the live stream when I put together, I think, the first uh, puzzle mystery quilt. No, I won't be. I don't know what I'm doing next week. Whatever. Um, oh, I'm talking to um, what's her name? Chris from So The Distance. Yes. So when she joins me next week, we will announce who the winner is on the live stream and we won't make the snafu where I share my screen again. I did have to go back. I cut that piece out for anybody that was watching last week when that happened. So that information is no longer being shared. So this is the one that we'll be giving away. I will do a community post sometime later tonight or tomorrow morning with the link where you can sign up. You'll be able to enter all of your information and I will draw a winner on Friday night. This is the one I'm going to work with tonight though. So does that make sense? Yes, and I would like the purple one, please. Why? You're not going to sew with it? No, I want you to make something and give it to me. Okay, you, you're calling dibs on the finished product. You're not calling dibs on the box. Well, you know how I roll. <laughs> you're so funny. All right. That is pretty. That's beautiful. So this is what I'm going to show you what each of the boxes look like when you open them up. And this is literally just mindless sewing you're just going to sew pieces together it's almost like improv piecing because there is no pattern that accompanies the boxes so i'll give you an idea of some of the things that you can do and then you can decide when you get the box what you want to do maybe there is a pattern or some sort of a block that you can make from these so when you open up the smaller box you're going to have all of your little pieces and then right in here you'll have your documentation it's got a link for their Cotton Cuts blog, which I am a guest editor for. Once a month, I write a blog post for the Cotton Cuts blog, if you didn't know that already. Ian, who is in the chat as well, is a guest editor for Cotton Cuts as well. And then we have, they, these are their infamous color cards. This is a card that shows you what the Cotton Cuts block of the month is, shows you what the block is. And then on the back side, you can color it in to get an idea for how that block will look in repetition. And I believe, yep 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 if you color this in take a picture of it and post it to social media by the 15th of the month and they have the date down here they put your name into an entry to win a prize so that's really cool that was in the small box i'm just going to set this back in there oh i can make this month's block of the month maybe we will that would be fun we'll see and then in the other box, we have lots of fabric, no documentation down at the bottom, but two of the really cool cotton cuts pens that I love so much. No, mom, they're mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're so not very I'm nice. Well, well, I know you just like to steal all my stuff and maybe I want to keep it for me. <laughs> maybe your mom will like it too. Uh oh. Um, no, I'm not still farting in the corner, Tessa. <laughs> Don't believe right. her. So maybe I will pull out that block 
and I'm just going to kind of study it to see how this gets put together. It really depends on the pieces that they sent to me because I don't know what they've sent and I, I, I just have to start working with it. So, mom, you went to, um, you went to your 50 year class reunion. Yes, we had so much fun and we made such amazing friends through the committee and because we we've been at it for about a year and a half putting this yeah. together and we've i've made some uh, what i hope will be good friends for a while so being the good people that we are we're starting on our 55 year reunion the reason we have to start now is we're we're old and we'll forget uh. <laughs> no i just made that up <laughs> <laughs> I, they bought yeah. me they bought me a jacket and had um, our school the little emblem that we had for our postcards and stuff for our high school mm -hmm. uh, and fifth year and my name all by the way I heard about you being involved with that huh finding out my size um I don't remember any of that. <laughs> oh, Mary did. Mary survived. Okay. Okay. It, it don't matter. But um, and they gave me this banner that they had hung up that everybody signed, oh, which was a lovely cool. gift. Yeah. Very nice gift. And I had had oh. Tiffany had made. You know, I like the jabber. Tiffany had made all those beautiful cardinal things that I gave to my um, committee members. Wait, no, 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 no. They, you're, you're again, leaving out details that people don't understand. Well, you know. So let me fill in the gap again. Mom's mascot for yeah. her school was the cardinal and she wanted to do something nice for all of the other committee members. She first asked me to make a wall quilt made in the shape of a cardinal so that she could pass that out. And I was like, I don't know if I'll really have time because she wanted like five or six of them. And it seemed like every time I talked to her, the number increased by one. It was first like three, then it was like, it was like just one or two. And then it was like, well, maybe four. And then it was like five. And then I think at one time it was six. And I was just like, okay, no, we're not, we're not doing this. But Tiffany has an embroidering machine and she's Tiffany always looking for projects. Amazing. So I reached out to Tiffany and asked her if she would please make seven of the Cardinals, I think it was seven, and yeah. put MHS class of 72 on it. And then mom's idea was that she was going to take the embroidery and frame it and give it to the rest of the class members. And I thought, well, or the committee members. And I thought, well, you know, since mom is on the committee, she deserves one too. So I asked for enough for the committee members plus one for mom. Go ahead. Finish mom the story. Doesn't, mom doesn't have it anymore. Our class president, as I said earlier, was unable to attend. So we had someone stand in for him. And we felt, we all felt that it would be appropriate to give him a thank you gift. And I had one extra cardinal that I took off my wall to give to him. She, she didn't have an extra cardinal. She gave him hers. But let's just call a spade a spade. I had it to say something. I had Tiffany make something for you. You gave it away. You make me sound like a horrible person. Well, I, I mean, I was a little sad because I thought well, it was, I was a too, really but, kind thing. And I was very appreciative and I was tickled to have it. But I also <laughs> <Really>? felt, <laughs> I also felt like everybody no, else on the committee got it and I felt he needed it too. Well, the thing is, is I can always have Tiffany make you another one. So I'm not really worried about it. I, I do think that you did the right thing. He stepped up. He helped out with the committee. I just it like did to amazing. you did do the right thing. Like I, and I'm sure everybody in the chat's probably saying the same thing too. And honestly, you did the same thing that I would have done. I would have paid mine forward and just gotten another one for myself or made one for myself. So I, I think you did the right thing. I just like to give you a hard time about it. Cause I was like, this is going to make her cry. But you know, the thing is that this is, this is where I was kind of thinking about it the other night. It almost was kismet. It was almost like fate because you got those embroidery things at home. They weren't shipped to you in Michigan and you packed all of them, including yours. When you went to Michigan, you did not plan to give yours away when you left. Mm -mm. 
So you did the right thing. I just like to give you a hard time. That's all. Note taken. All right. So I want to show you all of the different pieces Let's that I have cut because there are a ton of pieces here. There's a lot of variety to work with. I just want you to understand what you're going to get. Um, there are four different fabrics represented and I'm going to try to organize this so you can see a little bit better. Just give me a minute. Can I ask, how did the 50 year reunion feel? Like, how, how did it feel to go to your 50 year? Well, I had only been to one other reun reunion and that was for my 30 year. Okay. One of but the I have that... to say that the reunion last weekend, I don't think it was because I was a part of the committee. I just think the overall thing it was almost enchanting that yeah. it was it was that good. The the location that we had it at had been over backwards to accommodate us. You know, just everything fell into place like it should have times a hundred. So one of the things that I remember from high school, I've never been to a single reunion. It, something always seems to come up in our high school for whatever reason doesn't seem to get doesn't seem to have reunions or it's just like it feels like when they do have a reunion it's just like the same 10 or 12 people that already live in Michigan going to a restaurant for dinner on a Friday night well I live out of state I want it to be an event you know what I mean right right I do know someone who lives out of state and was going to undertake, and she actually doesn't live too far from me. She was going to undertake a class reunion, I think for our 25th or something like that, 20th or 25th. Gosh, has it been that long? Um, but she was going to undertake that. And her goal was to make it an event where not like black tie or anything, but have it like a weekend thing and have, have events mm -hmm. planned. But it just, I just, it just never took off. And I was really sad about that. So like, what does it feel like to go to a reunion? I've never been. I saw faces I hadn't seen since graduation or before, other than on Facebook or whatever. Sure. Hey, um, Ian's trying to come in, so I'm just going to go ahead and let him in. Is that okay? Yeah. Hi, okay. Ian. Oh, he's not here yet. There, he's coming. So you've seen faces that finish? I saw faces that I hadn't seen in 50 years, other than on social media. Um, okay. Okay. I thought I was going to be a little timid, kind of bashful, because you know how I get, I'm backwards mm -hmm. a little bit. But after Friday night, I didn't have time for that. I just gotcha. wanted to talk to everybody. It was such, it was amazing. I just can't, it was good. Gotcha. Ian, are you with us or are you just, are you just hiding? Is he hiding on here? <gasps> <laughs> what is he doing? Anything he can to make me laugh. This is his favorite oh. thing. Hi, Uni. <laughs> You're a little happy unicorn dancing on rainbows. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself when you accidentally sent me the link. I was like, oh no. Oh, that's funny, oh. Ian. He's, you're hilarious. You are absolutely hilarious. Mommy, he had, so last week I had a lady by the name of Natalie. She runs a company called The Ginger Quilter. I had her on for the first 45 minutes or so of the live stream. And I thought afterwards I would just do some sewing, but I was still in kind of a talkative mood and I was having a hard time transitioning out of that conversational mode. So I sent her, I sent the link to Ian, to Tracy, to, um, Tiffany to Teresa and oh, all you had a wild time. All of my moderators jumped in, but Ian jumps in with this blonde wig and these big glasses and this <laughs> robe. Like we caught him right before he was going to bed. He likes to do weird things to make me laugh. And what you don't see is like, and what none of you see, right? Like this, I guess this is only for my eyes. I don't know. So 
if when I'm on a live stream, he will do fun, weird things and he will send video clips of them to me during the live stream. And when I get off, he's just making weird faces and whatever. One night Surely when Donna not. was here, when Donna was here, he turned around so his big TV was behind him and he positioned his face in between me and Donna and he recorded a little clip. He's like, look, I'm there too. Hi, Donna. <laughs> He's a nut. He's a nut. I love him. I am. You are. So let me turn this around and show people what this includes. I'm going to pin my video again so I'm nice and full screen spotlight for everyone. So these are all the pieces that you're going to get. And I'm, I'm kind of doing a really poor job of showing this because there are four different fabrics represented for each one of these cuts. So what I'm going to do is set these aside so that I'm only showing you what we have in these two stacks. Just remember we have four times what I'm showing you because everything I show you is represented in each of the fabrics. We have these squares, which are going to measure at three and a half inches. So some three and a half inch squares. We have some small rectangles, which measure at six and a half by three and a half. And then we have some large rectangles, which will measure at nine and a half by three and a half. And then we have some half square triangle units. We have some small ones some medium ones, and then just a handful of large ones. So there's several things that we can do with all of these different pieces. We have these for each one of the colorways that are represented in your kit. So I'll just kind of show you those colorways here. And then I'm just going to kind of play around while we're talking tonight and see what I can build. Obviously, I think half square triangle units are going to come into the into play here a little bit, but um, my mind kind of wants to work with pattern stuff. So the improv muscle is going to get flexed tonight, and I'm really excited about that. Oh, hello, unicorn. Also, I am so cold, and I am so jealous of your onesie right now. Which is hilarious, because it was 96 degrees. I, th I think it's still in the 90s outside, and here I am wearing a unicorn onesie. It has a tail, too. Oh, can we oh. see your boobs? Oh, no. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> By the so way, Ian, hi, Mama Nancy. Hi, oh. Ian. How are you, darling? I'm good. Ian and Mama Nancy have never met. No. no. But I, I, I never got to say you did a great job on that quilt that you won the, when, the one you said. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. The one right here? Is that the one? Yep. Yes. That is the one. That is Le One. He did do I a good so job. I was so tickled that. for you. By the way, at my home right now, it's 53. So I don't want to hear about your 90. I don't want to hear about my 90 either. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want it to be 53. That would be oh, come much on. better. Uh, Debbie wants to know, are all of them half square triangles or are some quarter square triangles? They are all half square triangles. And you can tell that because if you look at the triangle units, I already made a half square triangle. Look at that. That's awesome. When you look at the triangle unit, I always say if the top is a point, it's a half square triangle unit because you're going to want that point on your square. But if it's a plateau, it's a quarter square triangle, meaning it's only supposed to take up a quarter of your square. That's I know. so good. That's handy to know. I didn't even realize that. Do you not watch Maybe. my videos again? I'm, I mean, I do, but I must have <laughs> missed that one somewhere along the way. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. Do you so, know mom, if I'm in um, Phoenix. I am not in Phoenix. I'm in Texas. I'm kind of happy you're here with us tonight because now I don't have to pay attention to the chat so much. I can sit here and talk and we can talk all about reunions. Have you ever gone to one? I, I'm going to be completely honest. I did not want to go to my, my class reunion. <laughs> uh, I really didn't have many friends. I mean, I had friends in high school, but honestly, I, high school was the worst four years of my life and I was really ready to leave it behind and I don't really care to go back. Fair enough. So, and you know, Mom, there's a there's a lot of people that feel that way too, Ian. Yep. 
there are neither Ian nor I have been to a high school reunion. So why don't you talk to us about like, what did it feel like to walk in? And so I'm, I'm kind of, I'm skirting around a question that I'm just going to come out and ask. Yeah, that would be better. So I don't think you were Miss Popular in high school. I was not. And I know you had some feelings about whether or not you would be accepted or wanted or whatever. Oh, yeah. So what did that feel like? Going into the weekend, I was very nervous about it. Mm -hmm. They kept telling me to take an extra Prozac, which <laughs> I did not. Which I okay. did not. Um, once I got past Thursday night, I was more comfortable for Friday and Saturday. And going into both Friday and Saturday, I talked to the ones that I never talked Nobody that I hung out with was at that reunion. Really? Well, I take that back. There was one. Okay. There was one. And, but I, you know, for some reason in your mind, you perceive that they're going to be just like that graduation day with their noses up in the air and being snooty and ha, ha, ha. Oh, look what you used to do. And that's none what I was that, wondering. None of that occurred. None. Really? Zero. I had people talking to me. We we had um, pictures taken for all the grade schools, all the different grade schools in our area. Okay. And when it came time for my grade school, there was two people in there that I never, ever would talk to in school. Really? That I didn't even realize went to my grade school. And the one said, yeah, we had a ball in fifth and sixth grade. And I just looked at him like, was I there? <laughs> I have no memory. Maybe it was much better point. than I thought it would be, if I'm being honest. Okay. What were you, you going to say, Ian? a good point. Um, she said, um, did it help that you were on the planning committee? It breaks the ice, to so to speak. No. I even told the planning committee, there is no way I'm going to talk on a microphone. Guess what Nancy had to do? Oh, talk on the microphone. You probably didn't stop, did you? Well, they can't, I kind of let everybody else talk. I said what I had to say. <laughs> okay. It wasn't what? long. And Rick asked to him over the food, and he did good. He didn't have to be told to wrap it up. Good. Okay. I don't There's think a... that being on the committee had any influence on. What was your favorite memory from the weekend? What was your favorite thing? All of it. <laughs> but you can probably, only pick one. Probably drinking moonshine in the parking lot. Okay, so can we talk about our moonshine story? It's gone you guys, now. You guys, this woman, when I moved from Michigan to Virginia, I moved near where my mom lived in Southwest Virginia. And I was looking for a place of my oh, own. Oh, look at him change his picture. Well, he turned his camera off. I was looking for a place of my own. And um, <clears throat> mom went with me to fill out an application for a townhome I was looking to rent. Oh, yeah. And the gentleman was a little weary to rent to me because I literally just moved there. I hadn't even started my job. So I was kind of new to the area and all that stuff, right? And so my mom sits down and he's starting to ask her questions to kind of get a feel for like, it, get a feel for who my family is. And mom's chatting away with him and she tells him where she's living at the time and he knows exactly where that is. And his eyes got really big when she said where she lived and he was like, well, then you know what this is. And he pulls out a mason jar of clear liquid and sets it on the table on his desk. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you have a drink of this with me, she's got the apartment. So mom sat there and had a, had a, had a shot of what they called Hayesai water. <laughs> yeah, I remember when he set it down on the table, I remember saying, oh, I bet it's not water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, you sure did. 
And are you leaving us? Did you leave us? Or are you changing out of your onesie because it's 98,000 degrees there? Okay. He's muted. He is. That means he's probably changing. And I love his picture that he's got on right now. He looks very handsome there. Okay. So this is what I have made so far. I've got uh, four half square triangle units and I tried to just do um, combinations of I think all of them, but I feel like I'm missing some. So I need this one with this, this one with this. Now I need these two together. One, two, I'm gonna make two half square triangle units of each combination. And then I have, so then that will be here. Yeah, let me try that and I'll come back. So, uh, John and Kelly said, have you heard of Popcorn Sutton? I don't know what that is. Yes, he was a man. Oh, okay. You want to he tell made me about moonshine him? in okay. Tennessee. Yes, All I've right. heard of him. He was on Moonshiners. Well, the man wasn't, but they talked about him all the time because he died. Gotcha. Martha said Ian's in the corner. <laughs> He's in a timeout. He was he had showing a his tail. He had a live stream on Friday night, and he was pressing some of his fabric on the iron board, ironing board. And every time he got up to go press, it looked like he was standing in his in the corner because his back was to the camera. It was kind of a dark corner. I was like, "That's like a Blair Witch thing." <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner, except we did on that live stream, and it was okay. And it was okay. So we got through the reunion and we've been recuperating literally all week. Yeah. Did Rick go? Oh, yeah. He didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And he knew what, how much it meant to me. Well, that's so, really something. Yeah, he, he's very good like that. Good. I'm going to assume Ian's coming back since he didn't leave the call and he just paused. So I've got a flower color with the dark and I've got a flower color with this one. So I need flower colors with this, which I have over here. I have those two there. So I have all three of those. I have all three of those. And then I have, I have, do I have, I need this one. I've got three of those and I've got three of those. I'm missing three of these. So I have this one with this and this one with this, but I don't have it with this one. That's what I had to figure out. What name is Mama Nancy going by on this list? She's Nancy Sexton in the chat, but she hasn't typed in the chat, so you probably can't tag her. No, I am not. When mom is on Zoom, she doesn't look at the chat. I don't see that. Oh, no. I'd have to do it on my phone. Yeah. Well, you could. I don't multitask very well. So when mom's on, I sew, I entertain her, and I read the chat. You're and welcome. It's, okay. it's the Nancy show. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's about time I got recognized, huh? Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> Rich Rudley says, I hope I have as much fun at my 50th reunion as you did, Mama Nancy. I hope you do, too. I hope you do, too, Rich. We had a blast. The only thing was we couldn't have uh, the room for quite as long as we wanted because they had a prior engagement book but they were so accommodating to all of everything we wanted and needed mm -hmm. janet wants to know if i ordered the clappers from so yeah no i did not because i have a six inch and a 12 inch custom made clapper that i already have so i didn't really feel like it was worth spending the hundred dollars for the pair although i will say they look absolutely beautiful and had I not already had the clappers I have, I probably would have pulled the trigger. How okay. are the brothers? Good. 
All right, what should I do next, Mom? I've got all these half square triangle units that I have made. What should I build out? What should I do with this? I have no idea. Let me look at you. Okay. Put it, put it down on there, the camera down. Okay. I think this is where things start to get a little funky. So if I'm doing it, I'm putting like the little checkered ones. Uh-huh. Put those in the center. Do you the want it? To, yes. Do you want it to all be the same color around the outside? That's where I have to see it to know. Okay. So I could do something like that. And actually, that's kind of the other fun that we can do. Before we even sew these together, we can lay out the triangles to see if that's something yeah, you want to look. build. Right. So I think I'm going to do this. And I'm going to take these. Is this the block you're thinking, Mom? Yeah, I like those blocks. This one like this? Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm going to make two more half square triangle units and I'm going to put it together to, to do this. Um, did I order their fabric line? No, I did not. I am on a budget and I don't have the money for the fabric line right now. So don't have the extra funds. Too many other things going on right now. But it I'm looks so lovely. That, guys. Hey, hey, welcome sorry. back. Are you still, you still in that uniform? Oh, oh my God. Holly. Do the run! You got to do the run! Come I can't on. do the run. Oh, I don't you have big enough space run. to do the run. Oh, oh, but you could do it. I bet <laughs> you could. I could picture you. <laughs> okay, enlighten me. What is this? Um, well, this is this is partly um, the reason I disappeared is <laughs> is because I got a call from Amazon. They were trying to. My apartment is a weird set up and they always have difficulty finding my apartment so I, I literally got a call while I was in my unicorn onesie that they can't <laughs> find my apartment and they need me to come out into the parking lot um, you did not so I figured what an opportunity why not why don't we just do a costume change real quick <laughs> this one's also a lot cooler oh I bet so, it is you want to you want to tell mama who you are Oh, I, she, I, I, generic pirate number one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Johnny no. Depp. Johnny Depp as Pirates of the Caribbean. He is Captain Jack Sparrow. Never <laughs> saw that. Oh, you need to. It's good. <laughs> I'm not a movie person. Why is the rum gone? <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Look how red her face gets. Uh, he makes me laugh. He's hilarious. <laughs> uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow. Yeah. Oh, so you do he, it good. He had, um, like there's TikToks and Instagram shorts and stuff. There's one guy. I think he's a, st a street performer in LA or something. I don't know where he's at, but he's got lots of stories where people walk up to him. They're like, I'll give you a $20 tip if you do it. And he's like, okay. And then they give him the tip. And then he starts running after them doing the Captain Jack run. And if you've never seen Pirates of the Caribbean, you don't get it. But if you've seen the movie, you know the flamboyant run that he does with his arms out. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, he, yeah, like, <laughs> he's got a bounce to it when he does it. And like his... His his body kind of leans back a little bit while he's doing it. And his arms are flaunting. He almost looks like a ringmaster, kind of, for a circus, but in pirate garb. Uh, yeah, it's just oh, it's, it's funny. You got to see it to understand why I think it's hilarious. Well, there is a video of me out on the internet. I'm not going to tell people where. You are going to have to go find it. There's a oh, video of me. That dressed as a pirate, as this pirate, uh, doing that run uh, for Talk Like a Pirate Day <laughs> somewhere. I'm going to, I'm going to let, I'm just going to let people try to find it. It's out there. I think that's marvelous, darling. Darling. Oh. 
The sound, math geek said, sounds like a challenge. I'm with, in my best Barney voice, challenge accepted. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of funny because there are several videos of me in different capacity on social media. And one of, one of them, you'll never know it's me unless I told you. And it's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I've been in the spotlight a few times and sometimes people will never know it was me. I like the, I've seen a couple of the ones that you've sent to me and I think they're great. They're fun. I've seen them. Challenge accepted people. <laughs> if it pops up on someone's community tab, I'm just saying, it, it, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh so boy. I, I saw these boxes go live on Cotton Cuts and yeah. I was very intrigued. Like it was funny the way that Cotton Cuts kind of teased them because they kept kind of like showing them off but not really showing them off. And I was really kind of confused as to what it is. So you just get a whole bunch of cut pieces. Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, so all of these pieces, I, I was just all in because it was cotton cut, so it didn't really matter. I was going to challenge myself to flex kind of like the improv brain. So there are two sizes that you get. All of the pieces are die cut, and you have three sizes of half square triangle units, three sizes of square slash rectangles, and it's across four different prints for each fabric line that they pick. If you buy the small, I think they call it the mini, I think it's like 20 bucks or something, you end up getting 250 pieces. And if you buy the super, you get 400 pieces. The trick is there's no pattern. So you really have to flex your creative muscle and get out of your comfort zone of following step A, step B, step C, step D. However, if you think about it, triangles and squares are the building blocks for just about everything we make in quilting. So I just made a square and a square by building that out. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to grab some more half square triangle units. And I'm going to make another piece. I can make a pinwheel. And the, the thing is, is because all of the fabrics coordinate, it doesn't matter what I build. They're going to go together. Okay. So I'm just going to get, I worked with this one. So let's pick two more fabrics to do a pinwheel, Mom. What do you think we should do? Okay, get that right next to the checkered one. Here, let me pull this down so you can see it a little bit better. That we'll one. Just call it, okay, we're going to call it one, two, three, four, okay? <clears throat> this, do, this two, one. do that okay. one, but I'm not sure what I want it to be attached to. Well, here I have examples of what that could look like when it's attached to other ones because I've sewn them up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, do those two, one and two together. Yeah. Okay, well, I already have two of them. So I just need to make two more. So this is apparently a new program that they're going to launch on the 15th of every month. Ms. Topaz was asking if this is a subscription box or what nope. this what this was it is a first come first served they will pop up on the website on the 15th you order it and when they're gone they're gone as far as i know that's the plan it is not a subscription service they are open to feedback so if you have a neat idea that you think could improve this let them know or feel free to let me know and i can pass the information over to them the the big thing is is you're just improv piecing and the neat thing I think is you don't really even have to build out unique blocks. You could just use these as scraps and just do wobbly sewing, you know, like crumb piecing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that would be cool. Crafty Panda asks, what is the price point for the box? Oh gosh, I don't remember. I want to say it was like 25 or 30 for the small and maybe like 50 for the large, but don't quote me on that. I will tell you they'll have another one on October 15th. They went super quick, like in minutes. They went really, I, I was shocked whenever I saw the post go up saying that you can order. And then I don't even know how quickly after it was already sold out. It was, it went real fast. It did. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of keep this overhead camera so you guys can see what I'm building as we're talking. So pinwheels, 
the whole idea is that you're just kind of, oh, I don't like that for a pinwheel. No. There's not enough contrast. No. But what if we do something like that? What do you think of that? I like that better. A lot this kind of looks like a cheetah print in the camera, doesn't it? Like a colorful exactly. cheetah print. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Well, the beauty is it'll so all work if, together. Get the other one back that you did. Well, let me put this block together first. Okay. And then we'll pick another one to make. Because all of my half square triangle units are the same size, if I keep sewing them into half square triangle units like I did over here and then just putting them into four patches, those blocks are going to be about the same size. And then I can use the other pieces to put randomly or make bigger blocks and whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. What were you going to say? Were you, was somebody going to say something? Oh, yeah. I was, sorry. I was saying that I was looking at the cotton cuts Facebook page to see if I could fry, find that price point. Um, uh -huh. And I think they, I think they took down the post of it actually going up because it had sold out. Um, so I can't find that price point at this moment. Okay. Somebody said, I think you could make a star. I think. I think we might be able to, too. I think we could build a star off of this one, actually. So why don't we do that? We'll make this one into a star after I sew this. What do you think, Mom? I like that. Like you, you just had it. Huh? That one that you're putting together. I like the way you had it to sew. Right. But what if we turn this into a star? You should. Okay, uh, you're. Conf I'm confused. I'm confused. You've had too much moonshine. I've had zero moonshine. <laughs> I don't like to drink, really. Moonshine burns your insides out. <laughs> oh Lord, do I have the story to tell you about moonshine? Okay, so tell us. So. That moonshine that you bought me when we went to retreat back, uh huh, the apple cider one is what I took with me. The apple pie? Yeah. Did I say apple cider? Apple pie one. Yeah. And so we were, while we were waiting for the tour, Mary and I kind of hit the bottle a little bit, not horribly. Oh, you luscious. And then Tony came up and I poured some into a cup. And he said, what are you trying to do to me? So I hurried up and drank half of it down oh. and never thought about it again. I was fine. Oh my I was gosh. fine. I was a little warm, but I was fine. So then when we got to the venue for Friday night, um, after the tour, I had like one and a half beers, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. two at the very most. And we left and we went home. And then on Sunday, Rick had bought me a beer. I didn't even drink it. And I had a glass of wine with dinner. And the rest of the night, I drank iced tea. Sunday night, my insides decided they needed to be cleaned out. <laughs> Do you know While what she I means? Sleeping. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is going south really fast. What do well, we think that's about all I'm for, What do we think about these for Starlight? I like that. I like that. That looks so cool. I'm trying to think like that. Something's off here. Ah, like this. Nope, like this. Yep, that's it. Nope. That still looks off. I'll have to I have to yeah. rotate it. Yeah. Like this. There we go. That's it. Is this what we would want for the star legs like like this or should we change it to be that? What do you think, Ian? I like it the other way. Me okay. too. 
like that. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay these pieces out so I know what I have to build. And then should I trade out and maybe look at this piece? Oh, you can't even see. Yeah, you'd have to scoot it over. I'll just build it like this. It's fine. All right. So two of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need two more of each one. Becca, oh Nancy gosh. sent you a, a Nancy Gus sent you five dollar super chat. Oh, <gasps> thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I also saw earlier in here, somebody said that, like, what if you don't have uh, creativity? I think that's the cool thing about these boxes is you have the pre-cuts to play with. So you can mm -hmm. lay things out and arrange them and see what you like, see what you don't like, and just kind of yeah. play with it. So I think it kind of lends itself to creativity and being able to um, play well, If you have a, a what do you call that wall? Design wall. You mm -hmm. could always just put them up on the design wall and see you know, see what works for you. That's true. And I think that's how they marketed it, too, is to grab your pieces in a design wall and go to town. It is. Love your braids. The braids I'm sorry, are what? Awesome. I love Ian's braids. They flop around. Kids are nuts. <laughs> they do. They do flop around. And well, I, can do that, I can do that um, line uh, from Wicked. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shauna, wants, Shauna wants to know what I'm making. I am just sewing random die cut pieces together to see what I can make everything's kind of unique in this moment i am turning this square and a square into a star does that make sense maybe i hope so it, it feels it feels like this is a very sleepy live tonight so remember the carnations i was making becky why don't you tell everybody about them because they don't remember they don't know Explain what it was. I crocheted um, carnations that I put into a basket. And we set that basket of flowers on our memory table for the ones that have passed away. And mm -hmm. my friend Mary that was on the live a little bit ago, or in the chat, I mean, um, I gave those to her to take home. And she just oh, loves them. But I'll tell you, I'm crocheting any for a while. <laughs> I'm done. I can understand that. I'm going to grab a design board so I can lay things out and flip it around a little bit. Mary is still here, she said. Hi, Mary. Mary Should is. We... Go ahead. Yeah. No, it's all right. I forgot. You just started talking. I'm old. <laughs> I can forget. Okay. Oh, geez. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> love me. Okay. Uh, Mary said she loves the basket of red and white carnations. She does. She made over them. She made me feel so good. Okay. Why? Just because she liked them so much. Okay. Look what you have forward to look look forward to, Ian. Don't tell him that he might not come. <laughs> I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Although people when may not know what I'm going to be doing, Becca. Hold on. You both start. You oh. you both talked at the same time. Ian, you were talking first. What did you say? I said I am definitely looking forward to visiting. But Becca, have you told everybody on your channel what we're going to be doing? Not yet. We'll get into, I, I think we talked a little bit about it. Or I've hinted or alluded to it, but we'll talk about it in a second. Mom, what did you say? Oh, hell, I don't know. 
<laughs> is is that why is that why you interrupt and you jump in because if you don't get it out you might forget exactly <laughs> look at him he's dying <laughs> Okay, so for those of you that have not checked out Ian's channel and you didn't hear him talk about it on his live, I think maybe we mentioned it last week, but Ian is coming up Thanksgiving weekend. <gasps> and he's coming on Thanksgiving and leaving, what is it, Wednesday afterwards? Yeah, the Wednesday afterwards. Yeah, so he's going to hang out with me for a few days. We're going to have lots of fun things, and it's going to include a live stream event the Sunday after Thanksgiving where we put together the So Sweet Puzzle Mystery Quilt. I'm getting the baby lock serviced, which is the one that poor Donna was working on that was all jacked up. And I put air quotes up, but it was all jacked up. Uh, the tension's off. So I'm gonna take it in to get that serviced so that it's nice and good and ready for him when he gets here. And we'll have, uh, we'll pull out the design, we'll all set it up, and we'll just start building our blocks, our, building our quilt tops. It will start early on Sunday morning, so, and it's probably going to go for a while, but we want to try to start early so that we don't impede Teresa or Tiffany's live stream events on Sunday. And we really don't want to do it on Saturday because we have plans to do things on Saturday, and Sunday's kind of a day to just stay in and not do much of anything. So we're just going to hunker down. Who knows? I might have crazy bed hair. You never know. <laughs> I was so thinking... my question is, yeah, hold it while I have this stuff. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> she already forgot. Don't worry. No, I remember this one. Is he staying in my apartment? Is he allowed to stay in your apartment? You already told him he could, didn't you? No, I told him I would ask you. I don't care. Yeah, I already told him he could stay in the apartment. See, I knew that. That's why I didn't care. <laughs> I've been lending your apartment out to everyone. You're welcome. If you're not That's there. Right. When I move in there, you're going to feel the hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I know. <laughs> I was going to say, I, was, I figured we would just start off in our pajamas and throughout the day, like, transition. Be like, I'm gonna put on, I'll put on some pants. No, there I'm going to take hour and then I will put on some pants and then I will put on a shirt and then I will do my hair <laughs> it'll be like the stages of getting ready <laughs> I'm still in the same gown I was in when I got up this morning <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you're still in the same gown that you were in when you came home on Monday <laughs> oh no I changed it yesterday when I showered <laughs> oh shoot oh mama loves a pajama week I'm just saying I just like <laughs> pajamas I don't mind that well okay so mom mom has circulation issues we all know this because of the swelling in her legs but okay. because of said circulation issues she's always had a chill she always gets a little chilly and she has taken to wearing layers but the woman can only put on oh that's pretty i know what that is that's i took the it away from him he offered it he offered well, it i took it so she is always taken to putting on layers. So she'll wear a flannel nightgown and a flannel robe and be covered up with another quilt. She will be in three or four layers of clothing mm -hmm. in a room that is set at 72, 73, 72, talking about, I'm cold. That's true. That's not, that's not cold. <laughs> It's all right. So, I had my heat on last night. Oh, yeah. So Jason's been waking up in the morning. We have our thermostat set programmed, right? And it's programmed to be, uh, it's programmed to be like 72 at night or something, maybe 70 at night. I can't remember. But it's programmed at 830. It starts cooling off. And at like 330 in the morning, because he wakes up at 4, 430 every day it starts warming up. Well, he got up this morning, yesterday morning, one of the two, all the days run together for me. He woke up and he was like, it was 70 degrees in here. I was freezing. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he was like, why'd you turn the air conditioner up? I was like, babe, I didn't. It got down to like 50 degrees last night. The house just got cold. <laughs> so I uh, did not turn the air conditioner down to 70. 
Well, yeah. we had decided what, what we've been doing is where it's been so hot, once it reaches like 70 or below, I can turn the air off and he's okay. Well, I, I, I would hope but so. But when it gets low 50s, upper 40s, I want the heat on. I could see that. I would even he, say, like, in the 60s, maybe the heat needs to start coming on. Well, in my world, yes, his no. Gotcha. So here's the that star block. Good. Here's the star block that I've built out. And now I need squares to go in the four corners. And I do have squares that they gave to us, which are in this pile. I just have to figure out which fabric I want to be in the corner. So I'm going to set... That no, here. not that one. Okay. The dark um, purple one. So that? No. Oh, I thought that was black. No, not that. The other oh. print. I'm working on it. Hold on. Well. The one that you got in the thing already. Yeah. What do you think, Ian? What does Johnny Depp say? <laughs> Why is the wrong one? Um, <laughs> I think it looks good. I like it. Okay. Where's so, my jar of dirt? <laughs> I will bring you one. Oh my but gosh. I won't be there for Thanksgiving. I know. I was no. sad about that. Really? Yeah. Because he's going to sleep in your bed. <laughs> I mean. Well, it wouldn't matter. I usually sleep on the recliner, so no worries. You don't want to cuddle with Ian? I don't think so. He's a little young. <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> uh, Brenda liked the darker one over this. Well, too late now, Brenda. Guess I'll have to make another one. You'll notice I am not squaring anything up i am just sewing and not worrying about it that's what i, I am about, using that's what i Go love ahead. about the puzzle mystery quilts is I, a lot of people i see a lot of comments on um like the cotton cuts groups the mystery puzzle mystery quilt groups and just in general across the um uh, cotton cuts websites and stuff so, uh, social medias, there we go, of people saying that, you know, their blocks aren't coming out to the size that is listed. They're a little short, they're a little long, um, but it's all about consistency. And like, I, I try to stress with everybody, every time I see a comment like that, I always try to comment back and be like, it's okay, my blocks never come out like the size that they're supposed to. They're always a little bit off somehow, some way, but it really is just about being consistent with your scene. Yeah, and I'll, I'll like I'll point out here, you can kind of see right here. I have extra fabric here that I don't have here, and I'm pretty sure that when I sew this into something else, I might chop off just the very tip top of that point. I'm trying to be consistent with my seam allowance, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job because I have a, I do have a seam guide on my machine, so I have to sew with the same seam allowance. But what's kind of getting me into trouble is when I'm sewing my half square triangle units, I'm not taking the time to square them up. And so they might just be a fraction of a hair smaller than what the actual square units are. But it's all going to work out okay. There's so much going on in that block that I'm not worried about it. My philosophy I think that's is stunning. My philosophy is if you see this on camera and you can't pick out the mistakes right away, then it's good enough. But trust me, there are mistakes here. And I, that's the other thing is like, I feel like I see it all the time and I catch myself doing it too. I watch content creators make stuff and I can't see their mistakes when they're working on something. And so I just assume it's perfect, but trust me, just because you can't see the mistakes doesn't mean they're not there. Boy, that's the truth. Like with this one, there are mistakes in this one, but I it, it's beautiful. I appreciate it very much. I'm I'm excited to see what it's going to do at the oh I always forget the name of the show, but it's if you're in Santa Sacramento? Clara. Santa Clara. 
Yep, it's out in Santa Clara. So if you're out in Santa Clara or going to the show, the quilt show in Santa Clara, uh, this this quilt will be out there. Yep. Cool. And speaking of quilt shows, I will be at the Fredericksburg Quilt Expo a week from today. So if you're going and you see me, say hi. I'm really excited hi, to go. Oh, gosh. You're a nut job. Hi, Becky. Yeah, don't call me that, please. I always call you that. That is your name. No, it is not. It is your name that I gave you that I call you. It is my nickname, but my real name is Rebecca. That only goes when I say Rebecca Dawn. Please stop using all of my names on the social medias. <laughs> uh, Marla says, go ahead. I said on the intrawebs. <laughs> Marla asks if I'm going to show up as a pilgrim or Johnny Appleseed when I come visit you for Oh, that'd be event. great. Or somebody else, I, I can't find the comment. It went by too quickly. Somebody else asked if I was going to be a turkey. <laughs> gobble, gobble. <laughs> Gobble, gobble. Well, if you're a turkey, are you going to put dressing in? <laughs> Ew. Mother. I didn't mean oh. it like that. From Why the should you always knock on your refrigerator door? Why? To Just in case of the dressing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you the only dad joke I know. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> What do you call a cow with no legs? I know the answer. Me too. Bah. I've said it so many times. A ground beef. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ground beef. I said. Oh. <laughs> ground beef. Yes. What do you think of that Bargello behind me? Coming it's along nice, here, right? Like it. It's nice. I also, I, I, I mean, Halloween's my favorite, my favorite. So I'm, I'm really loving that Halloween over your shoulder. Yeah. Tune in on Wednesday to see the final reveal. <laughs> that might have to go home with you, Ian, because I am not a Halloween lover but I did it because somebody else wanted to. Oh, <laughs> so, I will happily take that back home in my luggage. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to do that. <laughs> no, they, um, the, a uh, couple of subscribers were like, will you please do the mystery boo crew quilt along? I was like, sure. And I bought a kit and I could only do it. My calendar only worked out for September. So I did it obviously in September, which I think worked out a little bit better anyway. But I, now that it's done, I have no use for it because we don't decorate for Halloween. It is super cute, though. Look like, if I, were to, if I were to decorate for Halloween, that's what I would do. It's really cute. I love the, the shape that they use. And it's just, it's really, really pretty. They did, they did a good job putting that kit together. Gloria says, hey, Becca, I didn't know about the expo in Fredericksburg. Can you please repeat the information, please? I live about two hours away from there. So the Fredericks, the Quilt Expo, it's an annual thing they do every Sept late September, early October in Fredericksburg, Virginia. It is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday quilt show. They have lectures, I think, and classes, vendors, and lots of quilts to look, look at. Um, I will be there. I will be there both days, actually, Friday and Saturday. I'm actually taking a workshop, I think. I'll have to double check because I can't remember what I signed up for. You are. This, by the way, is my is my star block that I have made. Isn't it cute? See, and you can't even tell the imperfections when I hold it up like this. So it's going to nope. be like, that's, that's my whole thing is just don't look so closely at it because when it's all put together, you're not going to notice. And by the way... Super shout out to this lovely design board. Isn't that great? Like, yeah. okay, well maybe not that great, but, <laughs> but it did make, it did make putting the block a little bit together a little bit easier. I picked this up. I picked up two of them 
at the quilt show that one of my the one of the guilds I belong to hosted. These were handmade by one of the guild members. It's just some foam board on the back with some batting on the front, just glued down. And then they glued the binding around to it. And it looks like there's some stitching, zigzag stitching. I don't know exactly how they did that on the board. I'll show you up here. There's some zigzag stitching like right here on the edge. But I don't know how I don't know how that happened. What I do know is the binding is glued on. So this like this could be a no sew event. Like make yourself some design boards. Yeah. What size is the block? Probably 12 inches since each piece was three and a half inches. So this will probably finish at 12 inches because there's four units and the finish size of each one of those units is three inches. So four times three is 12. So it should finish at 12 inches. But with the seam allowances not being taken around all sides, it should square up to 12 and a half. Got it? Got it. Quilt math hurts people's brains. And I've I did not realize that that was not something that people could do in their heads easily. And I'm not saying I can always do it, but I've got the algebraic formula up here and it makes it a little bit easier sometimes. I almost failed I, algebra. So I, Oh, I love algebra. Not for me. <laughs> I never <laughs> took it. Never took algebra. The formula that I, I tend to go with and it hasn't failed me yet. Maybe there's a better way. The formula that I tend to go with, if I'll show you, if I'm trying to figure out how big a block should be, let me give you the overhead. So I know that I have four units going across and four units going down. So this is a really easy example for me. I know that this unit was three and a half inches before I sewed it in. Well, when this block is finished, I'm going to lose a half inch from both sides because I'm going to take a quarter inch on one side and a quarter inch on the other, which means if it is three and a half inches across, once I take a quarter inch over here and take a quarter inch over here, it'll go down to three inches. And the same thing's true over here. So I know my finish size is always a half inch smaller than whatever I cut at. So if this is three and a half inches, it will finish at three inches. To find out what my finish size of my block is, I take the finish size of my individual unit, and this is really easy because these are all squares, right? I take the finish size of each of the squares, one, two, three, four, this is three inches, and I multiply that three inches across how many times I have squares that are that size going across. I have one, two, three, four. So three inches times four gives me 12 inches finished. Now, if I want to know what this should be squared up to, I just add a half inch onto that finished size. This should be 12 and a half inches. I hope that makes sense. It made my brain hurt. Sorry. It probably made a lot of other people's brains hurt too. I think I talk fast when I talk math. So sorry. You showing off your quilt? No. Nope. He left. <laughs> Sage left. <laughs> <laughs> You're nut. <laughs> We're going to have a blast. <laughs> we are. We are definitely going to have a blast. I dare you to wear that on the plane and run that way all the way to baggage claim. No. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I, sure I, I do i don't mind making a fool of myself but when there's tsa involved that's not happening <laughs> uh, see i think that's why we get along so well because i don't mind making a fool of myself but when tsa is involved i don't want to do that either yeah no 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 tsa that's a no-go so what are let's talk i've i've sewn i made two blocks this is the other one i made just little stripes i'm going to set that aside there's no way I'm going to make a whole quilt with this tonight and it's already 930. So let's just chat. What, give me the top three things that you want to do in the DC area when you come. Ooh, I've never been to DC. So this is going to be my first trip and I'm really excited. <laughs> Sorry. I just saw in the comments, Debbie, you would you would get arrested. arrested. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm excited to I mean obviously getting to meet you in person for the first time that would be freaking awesome I'm super excited about that I um, really am the other things that I'm excited about are getting to see like our our um, national monuments and and 
the mall and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm super excited to see that. Um, and <laughs> Rich just said he will will get frisk for sure in the airport. Um, and, <laughs> frisk me, baby. <laughs> You knew that was coming. You knew that was coming. <laughs> um, and then I'm also, I, I really hope I'll get the chance. Um, one of the space shuttles is out uh, in DC. I've seen the one in Los Angeles and it would be really cool to see the one there. There's three of them, I think, three or four. I can't remember the number, um, but it would be kind of cool to get the chance to see all of them. So Sorry. here's my question to you, Ian. What's that? Do you want to do the see all the touristy things by walking, or do you want to just drive around like I do? Um, my phone. (laughs) Um, (laughs) if you're a Doctor Who fan, you know what that is. Um, (laughs) anyways, um, I don't know. It 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 really depends on um how far. Like, I don't. I here in Texas, it's hard to you know coming from Texas, it's hard to judge distances and stuff like that. So if it's, if there's stuff that's walkable, I'm down for that. But if it's not, then probably. I say for one of my favorite memories of being with Becky doing touristy things where she used to live, she'd go by Arlington National Cemetery, the Pentagon all the time, right? And this one day we're driving and she said, that's Arlington National Cemetery. She said, no, it's not. (laughs) It really was. (laughs) So when friends come to stay, I always ask them, well, when I, when I lived in Arlington, everybody always wanted to go into DC because I was a stone's throw away from DC with no traffic. I could be in the heart of downtown DC where all the Smithsonian's are in like 10 minutes. So it was always something we did, but over time, everybody's kind of gotten their fill of all of the things in DC and they no longer want to do the touristy things when family and friends come. So we don't do that as much. But I ask people, like, depending, uh, do you, do you want to walk to all the monuments and get up close to all of them? Or do you just want to see them and get a picture? <laughs> and, and if they say, I just want to see them, then I do. <laughs> she does a drive do, around. I do a first class tour <laughs> in my car air conditioning's blasting we slow down you creep out the way like you put your camera out the window take your picture and we drive on to the next one that's not always good for everybody because there are some things that you want to see more than others so what i propose to ian is when we i think we're planning like saturday um going into dc maybe or maybe the monday after thanksgiving and doing the double decker sightseeing bus which does Ooh. stops all around dc and you can hop on hop off whenever you want my only thing is i'm sad that i don't live as close to dc because i feel like the monuments have the monuments look different daytime versus nighttime and they are so so beautiful at night and that's my favorite time to see them so you can't you can't just do both you can't do both of them but the the hop on hop off with the double decker bus is nice because you can sit on the top and you can drive around and see everything and um yeah it'll it'll be great although i've i've uh i mean maybe we could still do like a nighttime drive-by tour afterwards so we'll see cool i definitely i definitely want to see like Kind of one of the higher, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the higher ones on the list is the Lincoln Memorial. That's oh. kind of high up there, and I really want to see that one. So I used to do. It's a bit of walking, but you need to get your steps in anyway, right? And it's not okay. going to be super hot and humid. It won't um, be Texas. <laughs> it won't be Texas. It. You might actually be cold. The one that I like to do, what I would do is I would park by the tidal basin, which is this little area of water right at the. Um, Was it the Jefferson Memorial, I think? And you get to go up and see the Jefferson Memorial, which is kind of cool. And it's really neat when you're standing there looking at him because the way he's, the way the statue is positioned, he is looking directly across the tidal basin at the White House, which is kind of neat. So then after you see Jefferson, you walk along and you walk up to the Washington Monument, which is right there. And -hmm. then you walk down from the Washington Monument to the World War II Monument. And you look at that and you see all the 50 states and then you walk along the reflecting pool all the way to Lincoln. 
and then you see Lincoln. And then while you're right there, you've got the Korea Monument and the Vietnam Wall, all of it's right there. So you can kind of get all of those major milestone monuments just from parking by the Tidal Basin and doing that loop around. There are a couple other monuments in D.C. that are worth seeing, too. The MLK Monument is newer. I actually haven't been to that one, so we'll we'll take a look at it. But that's kind of yeah. like that's kind of like the loop for me when it comes to the monuments because they're the they're the ones that everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to see the Lincoln Memorial. Everybody wants to see the Washington Monument, and everybody wants to see the White House. So I'll drive you by the White House because <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, but yeah, it'll it it it's um it's great. Like all of when you if you do all of those. It, it's great, but it will be a lot of walking. So you'll definitely want to wear some good, comfortable shoes. Oh, I got that covered. Got that covered. Yep. yep. And there is a Vietnam nurses memorial right there by Viet- the Vietnam wall too. But I don't think that's uh yeah, I don't think that's not, I don't think that's a must have or a well-known memorial. It's just, a, it's just a monument. It's not a big, I mean, it's, it, I don't mean it to be like, it's just a monument. It's, it is just it's, it's not a as well. soldier. It's not as over the top as like Lincoln or right. Jefferson or something like that. But there are lots of monuments all around that are like that. I think George Washington Carver has one and it's a beautiful monument, but most people don't know about it. So, yeah. So I, I, I always enjoy traveling and getting to see new sites and new mm-hmm. things so honestly you could take me to a fountain and i'd be like this is so awesome the yes there is a botanical gardens in washington dc um the problem with the monument that we're going to have is there is an air and space museum in downtown washington dc however that's not really the one ian that you want to go to you want to yeah. go to the one at the dulles air pa- uh, yeah. airport so that's going to be like the the Dulles Airport is out in the suburbs. It's not a hop, skip, and a jump from D.C. So it is going to be a targeted decision mm-hmm. to be at that museum, yeah. and so that's gonna that's gonna have to take priority over something for a day because it would be a, a almost a half day at least in itself. Absolutely. So, yeah. And by the way, I don't. I hope that's not where. I hope I didn't sound like I was mean. I just saw the message for the question from Katie like two or three times. So I just wanted to answer that and keep going. So I, I did see it. I did plan to answer, but I hope I didn't come across rude. What about the Smithsonian? Well, I think the Smithsonian that he wants to see is the air and space, but he wants to see the big one out at Dulles. Oh, okay. yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that was the yeah. same. Yeah. I, 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 think was, I also saw, I was looking at the um, air and space museum there in DC um, and they're doing a lot of renovations to their museum. What I'm sorry, Yo, Yo Patty G said, take Ian to all the places that have live YouTube cameras and make sure he's in a costume. Instead of where's Waldo, we'll be guessing where's Ian. Yes, <laughs> yes. do the thing. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Um, but the Air and Space Museum is undergoing a lot of change. The, the one in DC is going mm-hmm. undergoing a lot of changes and it I've seen some of the renderings they show on their website for what it will look like in the future and I'm definitely going to have to make another trip because it looks really incredible but when I saw that the space shuttle was out um at the at the one near Dulles I think right near Dulles yes um, yes I I kind of put that one as a priority just just because it would be super cool to see another one and, and kind of mark it off my bucket list if you will I've been to two volcanoes so far i've i've traveled and and visited two volcanoes and so i'm it's it's weird how we like collect things like i i never knew that i wanted to collect visiting volcanoes but i've now been to two of them and i'm like this is kind of cool i kind of want to go to more yeah yep i am i am really excited so i think our plan will be monday will be sightseeing in dc that way we're we're there during a business day and we can do some other things that I've got up my sleeve that Ian and I are talking about. Saturday, I think maybe we'll talk about potentially hitting the Air and Space Museum out by Dulles and we can get up early, go do that. And then when we're done, 
were kind of already up there. There's a quilt shop in Ashburn, Virginia called So Margabo, and we can go take a look and see if there's anything in there that you want to grab. We'll bring it back here. You don't have to fit anything in your luggage. We'll make a box for you. So if there's anything that you buy or just walk away from, we can drop but drop it off at the UPS store and it'll be all home the things. For you. Yeah. Buy all the things. About. Yeah, buy all the things. <laughs> So we'll go up to Ashburn for that, I think. Um, and I, I think by the time we're done with those couple of things, it'll probably be time to just be like, okay, we're done. We're going to come home. We're going to play Switch or we're going to watch a movie or just chill because the next day on Sunday, we're going to do that big live stream. And then by the time that's done, I think we're just going to have to veg in front of the TV because we're going to be like... <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So then on Monday, we'll do inside of DC. Tuesday, I'm not sure what we have up our sleeve, but he leaves to go on Wednesday. So I think we're just thinking breakfast on Wednesday and then getting to the airport. So I can fit a lot uh, in this sleeve. Like, you can fit, really I can fit a lot in here. <laughs> just, You're enough. just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've <laughs> seen a couple of people commenting. Uh, there, there is a Category Five hurricane headed to Nova Scotia, Mom and, and Mom and Pop is up there. So yeah. keep them in your thoughts. Yeah, definitely. There, I did see earlier today that they are bunkered down. They're prepared. Um, but their live stream tomorrow, for those of you that haven't seen their post, their live stream tomorrow is canceled because of the hurricane. Apparently it's projecting is going to be a, a full on category five when it gets all the way up there. And yeah. by the way, so Pat Strawhouse is in the chat and she starts at the beginning of summer. She lives in Canada and she has a air, an A-line camper. And at the beginning of summer, she starts her camping season that goes for months. Like she just travels the States and goes camping all over the place. And she happened to be passing kind of through my area. I think she rerouted her route so that she could swing literally by my house. So she swung by Tuesday and stayed and camped in our driveway Tuesday night. And we had a blast. But that was um, that was one of the things that we were talking about. I did not know where Nova Scotia was. I had no clue. And so she pulled it up on like she pulled up a map and she showed me. I was like, oh, that's like over by Maine. <laughs> I thought like Nova Scotia was just I knew it was in Canada, but I didn't realize it was way up northwest or east. Yes, I, I am apparently problematic with compasses, but yeah, so. Was Pop able to get home? I don't have that answer, but I um, I am sure they will recap everything for you once once this all passes and blows over. No pun intended. So I'm excited, Ian. Oh, and he's gonna we're gonna play Switch. We're gonna play Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing on the Switch. Yeah. <clears throat> I like Amy's comment of uh, UPS your dirty laundry and pack all your souvenirs in your luggage. That's actually not a bad idea. I, it's honestly not. I did that when I, I kind of did that when I went to Florida. I took, um, I took my friend's quilt for her wedding. It was her wedding present. And I took it with me when I flew to Orlando. I checked a bag that had like clothes and stuff like that. And basically my carry on luggage was the quilt um, just to make sure that it, I wanted to make sure that they arrived safely and with me. And so I made sure to keep it with me. But when I flew back, I, I kind of shoved souvenirs into my carry on and then all my dirty clothes <laughs> went into my checked bag. I reckon I'll do that when we travel, since we both take a suitcase, We'll keep all the clean things, whatever's left over in his, and then we put the dirty clothes in mine so that when you get home, you just dump it out and start doing your laundry. That's a great idea. I just dump it all out, even if it is clean, and I wash it all anyway. <laughs> but we have mailed stuff back. When we went to Disney World a few years ago, <laughs> we took, we went down to the front desk, and I, like, I didn't think they would say yes, but apparently people do this all the time. We went down to the front desk. We were like, can we mail some stuff home? And they gave us a big box and we packed it up and we took it back up there and paid the postage and it was waiting for us when we got home. Yeah. Wow, that's, cool. that's what I yeah. did when I went is I took, um, I actually went to the retail location 
And I start, I just picked all the souvenirs. It was towards the end of the trip. And I just picked up all my souvenirs that I wanted to, to take home. And it was actually funny because I forgot I wanted to get um, one of those Starbucks You Are Here mugs. And mm. so I actually, in the middle of my transaction, I was like, oh my gosh, can I put this on hold and go grab my mug really quick? And she was very kind about everything. And she let me go grab the mug and I came back and she packed it all into a bag and they ship it home. You do have to pay for shipping, but they yep. will ship it back to your house. And it worked out perfectly. It made it a few days after I did, but it okay. was the easiest way. Cause there was no way I was going to be able to get a mug, a coffee mug back uh, in my luggage without it breaking. Yep. So let me ask you, I was going to ask you something and it literally went poof away from my brain. So like never mind. Huh? like mother like daughter literally i started talking and then it just went away so you know there's Sorry, that, that. Was my fault my bad no what was your fault i i feel like i was talking over over you so you so you forgot what you were going to say am i having a stroke i'm like stuttering over my words what is happening i don't know but two peas in a pod dude i've been doing the same thing ian and i have been talking the past week about like we're having a hard time remembering our words. And literally there's been times where I'm just like, um, um, uh, the, the thing, or we'll mispronounce a word. And he said it first, I did not say it. He was like, am I having a stroke right now? And I was like, I've been wondering the same thing. I was literally, <laughs> I was literally stuttering. Like I, I knew the word was here, but I kept yep. start, the starting sound would happen. And then the rest of the word just wouldn't come out. Yeah, I had the same thing. And it's, I'm not making light of, of strokes or anybody that's dealt with it. I, that is a very serious thing. And I really don't think I was, but it was just, it's just one of those things. Mom, I don't know if you ever get like that, but I get moments and they're years apart, but every so often I'll go through a phase where I can't remember my words and I just seem to forget how to talk. And that's what I've been dealing with. It was kind of like at Myrtle Beach, that sign where I said it was Toy Is Land, it was Toy <laughs> Island, same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was then like, I Toy saw, is I Land. I was reading something the other day, and it was spelled C-L-E-R-G-Y. I said Clegry. Rick said, what, you, what did you say? And I repeated it. He said, honey, it's clergy. Oh, yeah, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I well, get I it. I have dyslexia and so words are hard enough already and spelling for me is just the worst. And it, it really like, I think my brain does work differently because of the dyslexia. And so it, things kind of bounce around my brain differently. And yeah. I, 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 it's, it's honestly been a gift. I, it's not a curse. It's a gift, but sometimes it makes me really frustrated when I'm trying to get things out. Yeah. Well, that would explain I, why your head keeps flopping around. <laughs> your brain's bouncing. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Can you hear the rocks feel, rattle around? <laughs> I feel like with me, it's, I have thoughts in my head that are always going. I'm all like, I, I have a heart and mom, you have this too. And I think I got like two peas in a pod right here, but I have a hard time slowing my thoughts down over the past few years. Yep. several years the position that i'm in does require a lot of speaking in front of people and i was never comfortable with speaking in front of people until i got that position and i have become more comfortable with it now i it doesn't really bother me like i can speak in front of people but it takes a lot of energy to quiet those thoughts down and also part of that job is just a lot of communication with other people and so I have to make sure that I am intentionally listening, which means when I'm talking to somebody, I have to turn those thoughts off mm -hmm. and listen to what the other person is saying and absorb it. And then for my response, instead of thinking about what I want to say while the other person's talking, because I might miss something. So it, take, it takes a lot of energy to make those voices stop a little bit. Um, but I find when I don't make the voices in my head stop talking to me, that's when I start to get my words rambled. And I think that that happens more when I'm stressed or tired or overwhelmed or just have too much stuff going on. And that's why I take some of the medications I take is to help it turn off, especially at night. 
oh my gosh, it's so much, it's so bad at night. It didn't used to be bad, but now like I have to watch, I turn on certain TV shows that I know are not going to, they're not going to engage my brain. It's like, they're like shows that I can veg out in front of mm -hmm. and they, I'm okay just closing my eyes and listening. And it's almost like a meditation. The thoughts turn off and I eventually lull myself to sleep. And you want to know what they are? Like Shark Week, anything flying over America from the Smithsonian Channel. Like I love all of those. Any National Geographic special or any of the old sitcoms. Like I'm talking like Mary Tyler Moore, Dick Van Dyke. Um, well, then girls. Well, yeah, but... When you find out that Blanche was only 51, you stop watching Golden Girls as you're approaching 50. So no thank you. <laughs> so, no, I just... Um, it's kind of I like just, white noise. It's it's kind yeah. of like white noise that lets your brain... Yep. Kind of, and we talked about this earlier. I will turn on... I have an Apple Music subscription. And so I will turn on the Focus channel, which I really love. The fo It's actually the Focus radio station. And yep. that really helps me work because a lot of the songs don't have lyrics they're just kind of background noise that I can listen to but it has a certain beat to it that kind of keeps you moving Keep forward and kind of zone out on it yep I have I my go-to for something like that I have a playlist that I called cello chill and it is a couple of different artists but the one predominant one is a group called two cellos and it's just two guys and they play cello they play cellos and they cover top 40s hits r&b's like 80s music like eye of the tiger and stuff like that and there's i love listening to that and i will put that on it calms me down it helps me stay on task but it also motivates me and wants me to do stuff so that's like my go-to turn it on and let's get some works done station i would turn on 70s yeah I can see that. There was one night when you were here, the last time you were here, maybe you were here. I'm trying to remember where you were. I think you were here and we were downstairs, but mom has a way. So when I was little, she used to do this thing where she would rub my forehead, just like with her fingertips or behind my ear by like tucking the hair behind my ear. So both of those things soothe me. Like it just, especially when she does it because she has that touch you know what i mean like she has the touch that my mom had that's weird anyway she has <laughs> that <laughs> she has that touch down and i was sitting next to her on the couch and she reached over and she just started doing like this and i was like oh all i need is like the theme music to taxi and i'd be zoned out i just be like, because between the zone, the, the taxi theme song and that, I'd be like right back in my childhood. Like she took me instantly. I was right back there. I did that to you from the day you were born. Yep. I did so, it so, fun. so, so fun creations is here and says that I follow you. I just don't chat. So hello. I just want to give you a shout out. That's all. <laughs> Teresa said, you look awesome in long hair, Ian. <laughs> he needs to be blonde. Mm -hmm. Wendy says, so Becca, I love the Farmer's Star. I'm making a Christmas quilt for my nephew's wedding present. That's awesome. And we will actually, so the Farmer's Star, what she's talking about, that's a pattern that I wrote. It was inspired by a quilt that I made a few years ago. And it is available for $5 on my website. And if you are a member of, oh, we didn't even talk about this. I've got so much fun things to tell you about two weeks from today. So I'll get to that in a minute. Mom doesn't even know this because mom's been traveling. So um, I sent your emails. Yeah, you did. So moving on. Uh, that pattern is available for $5 on my website. I have another pattern that will launch on October 1st for $5. But if you are in my VIP program, you get those patterns for free on the VIP pattern library. So don't buy the pattern if you're in the VIP group. And if you want the pattern for free, join the VIP group. And also tomorrow, 
we will have our VIP Zoom session, which you can get the information for that Zoom call in the VIP group on my website, sobeka.com. Tomorrow we are just doing a whips and UFOs project. I'm going to be working on the bar jello behind me during that Zoom. It is scheduled to go from 12 to 4, but I'm going to end at 3 because we have some plans at 4 o'clock and it's going to take us about 40 minutes to get there. But we are meeting on Zoom, so if you are part of the VIP program, make sure you register for the Zoom. So, are we ready to talk about the big thing? I'm so excited yeah. about this. All right, so I, when I set up the VIP program, I wanted to, essentially what I wanted to do is build a membership program that allowed me to actually interact with my members and the YouTube perks program is great, but that doesn't really lend itself to be a good membership program. It is better for shout outs on videos. I can't get a hold of people. So I've designed this VIP membership on my website that is really just about giving you exclusive access and content that's not related to YouTube. So it is separate and apart from YouTube. One of the things that I wanted to be able to do is pop up shops. I do not want no, I shouldn't say I do not want to be, but I cannot be a full-time quilt store. I have a nine to five. I have a family. There are too many other things happening, but I do love the idea of having a garage sale or a yard sale type event. What either I'm de-stashing or I'm selling things in limited quantities and I want them to be sporadic, but I want to give you advance notice when that's going to happen. So for the first time ever, I am having my very first, I've been thinking about this for years, I just haven't pulled the trigger on it, but I am, hold on, I am launching um, a, I muted you mom so you could talk to Rick, um, I am launching a pop-up shop that will hit the, hit the website, it will be on my website, sobeka.com, if you are a VIP, you will have access to a VIP pre-sale event where the items I am selling will be priced lower than what I will sell them for to the general public. So you're asking yourself, what are you selling? Charm packs. Only charm packs. Some of the charm packs are featuring fabric lines that are out of print, and I only have one of. Some of the charm packs are featuring fabric lines that are in stores now, and the most I have is 13 or 14 of that one. So you're going to want to act quickly. If you see something you like, you're going to want to buy it because they're going to move very, very fast. Every order is going to get a handwritten thank you from me. It will get a free pattern featuring a charm pack. So you can use that pattern with the charm pack that you buy and then the charm packs that you purchase. The VIP event will start at 7 a.m. on Friday, October 7th, and it will end at 7 a.m. on Saturday, October 8th. You have 24 hours. When that pre-sale event is over, the VIP pricing goes away. It is public pricing only, and everybody is going to be able to buy those items. Shipping will be $5 flat rate. Unfortunately for this one, it is limited to US only because I have not yet had a chance to figure out how to ship internationally. And I'm not gonna be able to figure out how to do that before the sale goes live. But I am looking to see how I can incorporate that for my non-American friends in future pop-ups. But this one, it's not gonna happen for. So let's talk about pricing. The charm packs for the VIP folks will be $9.99. The charm packs for everybody else will be $10.99. So if you are a VIP member, you will get a dollar off each charm pack that you buy and you will have first dibs on those charm packs. You'll be able to shop them before the rest of everybody else has a chance to get in there. So if you are interested in joining the VIP program, I think if you do exclamation VIP in the chat, you'll get a link over to that. You go to my website, sobeka.com. There's a link up there that says join VIP. I'll I'll get you all that stuff. It's sobeka.com slash join dash VIP. It'll list out all of the benefits. It is $6.99 a month. And that $6.99 gets you pre-sale event, VIP pre-sale when I do have a pop-up shop. So you get discounted, you get a VIP pre-sale for discounted merchandise. You also get access to a Zoom that is the final Saturday of every month, usually from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. 
And then there are random giveaways that I do for members and other little fun things. If I design a pattern, sometimes I toss those out there for free. So there are some benefits, but it is relatively new and it, I'm just kind of getting started with it. So you can check all that out over at my website and I will fix that command so it actually makes it a link and you don't have to copy and paste. Did I cover everything, Ian? I think so. I think that I was, I was grabbing links and doing stuff as you were talking as well, but I think you covered everything from what I can remember. Okay. I saw there were a couple of questions that you texted me, but I didn't even read them. Let me fix that. Do you want to read those questions off and I'll see if I can answer them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me grab that really quick for you. Um, one of the questions was from Katie. She says, where are we supposed to sign up for tomorrow? I thought we were just getting an email from you. Um, you did get, um, you did get an email. So what, uh, I, I thought I sent that out to everybody. I'll have to check the email server and see if that went out. Maybe I missed it. But if you log into your account on Sobeka.com and you click on my account, you will see the you will see a section that says VIP. And if you just go to the main page, I think I call it VIP Lounge, you'll see all of the events right there. You can also click VIP events and it'll show you all of the events right there. And it should give you a link to register for the Zoom. Okay, people didn't get the email. All right, I will send one out tonight so that it's in everybody's inbox. But just in case you're proactive, you don't wanna wait for the email from me, just go to sobeka.com, log in. All of the events for all of the Zooms through the end of the year are already there. So you can already register for September, October, November, and December. Yeah, I, I just was thinking about my emails today. <clears throat> Excuse me, my emails today, and I don't, I didn't get one from you today. I normally... I know I'll something went weird. Um, Nor so that's but. one of the things that mom usually helps me out with. And with her being out of town, this is something that might have just gotten looked over. I will generate one to go out tonight. But in the meantime, you can log into your account. I think Tracy was asking, Tracy H is asking about forms of payment for your pop-up shop. Apple Pay, credit card, PayPal, I think all of them. I think the website is designed to take any anything PayPal, Apple Pay, or major credit cards. And I am going in to do a quick blast to all of the VIP members with the uh, Zoom link. Yes, that's it. I can talk. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> and do you want to cover one more time um, the switch over from uh, oh, yes. to membership over to your website? Yeah, so... Channel perks are going to remain on my channel. So if you like during live streams, having a little badge next to your name and having your name show up as a bold green, which if I'm being completely honest with you, does allow me to see your name a little bit better. It draws my eyes to that. If you like that form of recognition, you are more than welcome to keep it. The YouTube channel perks really is just a way for you to send in a monthly tip to my channel using the YouTube platform. That's all it's going to be. In the past, that $4.99 tier that I had in the YouTube perks program, I had done a Zoom for that. But part of the reason why I switched to the website is because I felt like I had a hard time getting the information for the Zoom out to people that were in the channel membership. You didn't know where to go to find the link. It was just all over the place. I felt like by having uh, exclusive access and all of that stuff on my website gave you one place to go to get everything. So starting October 1, the Zooms that I do will be exclusive for VIP only. So if you are in spools and you have been thinking about joining one of those Zooms, you want to consider canceling the spools or keep it if you want to. You're welcome to just downgrade or keep it. It's up to you. But if you want access to the Zoom, Zoom is no longer on, going to be shared on the YouTube channel perks. It's going to be on my exclusive access. I think I answered that. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Okay. So if you I, want to yeah. sign up for that, make sure to head over to her website, sobeka.com. 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 Uh-oh, we got an echo oh, over there. <laughs> so funny. I am getting, I just had to get the page open so I could create that blast when it's ready to go out. All right, I think 
Was there anything else that I needed to cover tonight? Or was that it? I think I covered everything. Okay. Are you going to do your sew and tell? Oh, um, I mean, it's 10 o'clock. And it's been a couple of weeks that I've done that. So yeah, why not? We'll do that. So if you have been working on something tonight and you would like to share with the world through the YouTube airwaves what you've been working on, go ahead and post something in the Facebook group. If you do exclamation Facebook in the chat, it'll give you a link to the Facebook group. I'm going to share my screen, so I don't know if you will see all of us on camera, but it will allow Mom and Ian to both see what I am seeing. So give me a second, guys. I'm going to get this up and running. While well, you're getting that up and running, Debbie Dunn is asking, will the $4.99 automatically switch to $1.99? No, I don't think I can do that. I'm still looking into it, um, but it's really easy for you to do it. If you log into YouTube, click on your little icon in the upper right-hand corner, and then you'll see a menu pop up. You want to go to purchases and memberships. And once you click on that, it'll list all of the purchases that you've made on YouTube, as well as all of your channel memberships. You can cancel any membership on that page or downgrade them if that's an option. So I would, I would advise you do that. I don't know if I can do that for you. That's one of the things that I don't have control over on YouTube. I have no control over your billing. I have no control over any of that stuff. Sorry. I hoped I would. I did not, sadly. I can't help. All right. Can you guys see my screen? No. Okay. Oh, because I have to click share. Now, can you see it? Yep, right. I sure can. Yes. So I am going to come in and I'm going to change this post to new post. This is actually a flag that Ian taught me about. So I could remember, <laughs> like, make sure I'm looking at the newest post first. So we'll just kind of scroll through here and see what you guys have been working on tonight. Sandra Jean is working on a sew sampler for August. That is really cute. This must have been from the, um, the spooky box. I'm going to sneeze. I couldn't get it quick enough. I was trying to mute. <laughs> You're all good. You are all good. It didn't, it wasn't that loud. You did a great job. <laughs> not, uh, I was like, no. Not, <laughs> You're good. Cover the microphone. All right. um, Nancy Gus is saying that she couldn't register for the Zoom because the link is in a hyperlink. If you copy and paste that link into your web browser, it will automatically open what you need. I will take care of fixing all of those things as soon as the live stream is done tonight. So just give me like 10 minutes after this. And the good thing is, is because the link is in the password protected VIP section, it's automatically approved. So you don't have to wait for me to review and approve, which is another blessing to having this on my website and not on YouTube. This is the Bargello that Donna is walking us through making, and that is the start of my Bargello there. Beautiful. I love that. It is. Gail Merrifield working tonight on Mount Scrapmore in the basement, and yes, that plaid bag is full. Oh my goodness. Wow. Lots of scraps. Chippy her a quick look at some orphan blocks going into the back of a blue quilt that I'm making. The fabric I was going to use for backing isn't going to work, so I raided my box of nine patches, 12 inch blocks, and six inch blocks, and scraps of blue fabric. Love it. Looks like the rest of these are a little bit older, so I'm just going to refresh and see if anything new came in. Da da da. Clue one of Piazza for Colorway Nirvana from Cotton Cuts. Katie's working on her puzzle mystery quilt. She's also working on making these lovely items for the Christmas market. I think these are hot pads that she's crocheting. Mom, look. Those are beautiful. There you go. I figured you'd like them. Wendy is making placemats for her daughter's babies. And then we're back at Sandra Jean. Let me refresh again. I kind of switched over to Facebook really quick, so I didn't have a chance to let those posts build up. So I got to keep refreshing to make sure that we're 
getting all of the posts. Debbie Dunn says, I've been working on this. It gets borders, turned on point, and other stuff added. Also, quilted one of my mother-in-law's tops and trying to decide on binding. Mom, do you know what I did this week? What? I bound a quilt. But did you do it I by did. hand? Yup. Halfway oh, anyway. <laughs> and then I came up and went to the machine. <laughs> I got down one and a half sides. And I was like, I really need this to be done so I can take some footage of it so I can edit it in the video. And I was like, okay, stitch it in the ditch. Here we go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And it was all done. <laughs> <laughs> I always do all of mine by machine. I never hand uh, add the border or binding. Although the I will say... I will say, so I started out, I tacked it to the front and I pressed it out and I clipped it over to the back and I started hand tacking it down. It was actually going pretty quickly, but I knew I didn't have time to get it all done because I wanted to work on some other things. So I prioritized my time a little differently and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do this by machine. So I got my magnetic seam guide, put it on my needle plate and I lined it up so that my needle was literally right next to that fold on the binding. You know what I'm talking about? That ditch. And I just went a little bit slower than I normally would. And I went all the way around and you cannot see the stitching on this at all. I think Donna Jordan did a tutorial on this and I could never get it to work. I could never stitch perfectly in that ditch, but that magnetic seam guide made it all possible. I'll just say that I, as much as I enjoy sewing the binding on by hand, it holds better. The sewing, the binding will stay on better if you do it on the machine. Yeah. Do you remember that foot, um, Becca, that I used on my live for the postcards, the number 10 foot that I used? That's yep. what I used to put my binding on um, because I'll, I'll sew it to the, I always, it's weird to me that there's this quote unquote rule when you machine binding on that you're supposed to put it on the back and bring it to the front. But mm -hmm. I like the way of uh, the way it looks, having it go to the back. And so I, I've done a video on um, glue basting the bindings on. And so I'll sew it to the front, glue, glue, bind, glue baste it to the back. And then I'll use that number 10 foot to ride that ditch and get yep. that needle right in the right place. The edge, sti the edge stitch foot, yes. So what I have found, I do the same thing. Normally I will, ta if I'm going to sew it by machine, I'll tack it onto the back, fold it around to the front, and I will edge stitch with a coordinating thread from the front just to hold it on. But I really love the way it looks when you don't see the stitching on the front. I just love that. I think it looks so much more polished. I don't mind if you see it on the back, but I don't want to see it on the front. The reason why I stopped doing that is because I had a heck of a time whenever I would tack it to the front, fold it around, and then stitch in the ditch. I'm stitching blind, and I would find gaps where my binding that was pulled over to the back wasn't being grabbed. So I followed Ian's instructions and glue basted just a little bit of glue and held it down there and made sure that the fold of my line when I'm pulling it back extends past the line of stitching that goes around the backside. And then I'm guaranteed that when I stitch in the ditch, I'm going to hit that piece on the back. And it worked like a charm. So, all right, I'm going to go back to the show and tell because this has been sitting on the screen for a minute. This is from Pat Straw house this is a terry fox tote that tote that was made see i just couldn't talk right there terry fox tote that was made for a friend who organizes the terry fox run for our area and she shared the whole story of who terry fox was i'm not going to go into it here because i don't think i'll remember everything but he did uh it, it it's a whole thing and this was a very memorable thing for her so um, if you don't know who Terry Fox is, ask Pat. She will fill you in. And I will not do it because I will not do him justice. We do have a new member request, so I'm going to try and get them in. John, we've got you in. We're going to go back to the group. Tucker. Tucker's lurking in the chat. I love it when he lurks. This is a sneak peek of his basement. Look at those floors. His gamble's all set up. And oh, 
oh, by the way, I spy with my little eye a quilt on. Oh, Becca, I think we lost your audio. Am I the only one? No, I can't hear it either. Hold on. Oh, there it is. You're back. What happened? I don't know. It just, you went robot for half a second and disappeared and we never heard you. Oh. Again. Okay. Well, uh, what I was saying is, do you see what I see? I spy with my little eye, a fun quilt on there and you'll have to stay tuned to Tucker. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That black wall's nice. Yeah. So Tucker and I are doing a collab and I do believe the quilt that's on his long arm is one that I pieced and I am super proud of and I can't wait to see what he does with it. And then for anybody that's tracking the Bargello, Donna, if you want to just, uh, if somebody wants to throw a link for Donna's channel in the chat, she's doing the Bargello, a Bargello so tomorrow night at midnight for a couple hours and then a creator wrap up on Sunday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. And this quilt that I have on the screen in front of us is going to be part of that. So I'm gonna refresh one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything and then I will stop sharing my screen. I think that's it. I mean, what, going out with Tucker's sneak peek is, uh, is, is worth it. <laughs> All right. I think that's... Can I, can I show off my, my show and share? Yes, of course. Let me pin you so everybody sees you nice <gasps> and big. Oh! So I'm making, um, it's the get out of town bag that I'm working on and it has you quilt the outside. So this is what I've been working on. It's gorgeous. So that's gonna be the inside. This is gonna be the outside. Can't wait to finish. Are you Yay, gonna bring Ian. Is that gonna be the bag that you pack to get out of town when you come in November? I don't know if it'll be the bag that I pack, but I may pack it to bring along with me. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you have been in costume this entire live stream. <laughs> you are a nut and I love it. We're just missing Tiffany to complete that trifecta. Oh gosh, here we go. Everybody grab your <laughs> He's a nut. Oh, he's a nut. <laughs> he's one of a kind, that's for well, sure. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's all I've got for tonight. Next week, we will be live with another Zoom chat. This time, we will have Chris from So The Distance with us, and we're just going to have a little quilty chat. So bring your UFOs, your whips, whatever it is you want to work at. Not your whip whip, but your <laughs> WIP. <laughs> bring your... Whip is good. Whip -whip. Na, 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 na. <laughs> I think that needs to be an outtake <laughs> for a little short. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see you next week with Chris O'Neill from So The Distance and maybe even a couple other guests that might join us for a little bit of Quilty Chat. And I think we may have somebody physically here in the studio with us too. So we'll see how that works out. I'm not going to be there. <laughs> no, it won't be my dad. Um, <laughs> sorry, Ricky. Ricky Tricky. Ricky Ricky. Ricky Tricky. Tricky Ricky now. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight, guys. It was a blast, and I will see you guys all in a week. Bye! Adios! Bye.